Today I have a video presentation on king and pawn versus king. Our first example sees the white king placed aggressively on e4, a pawn in front of the king on e5. The enemy king is perfectly positioned in front of that pawn placed to stop it at e7. This position is a draw. With black to move, the most accurate move is king to e6. Interfering with the advance of the pawn. That's the most important defensive strategy you have to remember. Always try to interfere with the advance of the pawn. Now white will move to the side, king d4. Now the most accurate defensive move for black is king to e7. White's only attempt to make progress is to play king d5, and you can again take the opposition. When the kings are placed opposite one another, separated by an odd number of squares, you have what's called the opposition. So king to d7, the kings are separated by one rank. That's one square, an odd number. So you have the opposition there. King d7, e6 check, king e7, king e5, king e8, king d6, and again, king d8, taking the opposition, separated by one square. e7 check, and now the draw is obvious. After king e8, king e6, a stalemate has occurred. So we've seen a position where the king is actually in front of the enemy past pawn, able to stop it. But something more interesting happens when the enemy king is in front of that pawn itself. So let's see another example. In our second example of king and pawn against king, we see the kings placed in the same position, the white king on e4 and the black king on e7. The difference here is very, very important. The white pawn is behind the white king at e3. Now it depends on whose move it is as to whether this game should be a draw or a win. If it's black to move, it's a draw. He can oppose the white king. Again, we use the term opposition when the king is separated by the enemy king, directly opposing it by one or an odd number of squares. So this is clear opposition, one square in between the kings. King e6, king d4. The game would play out like this. Now, very important, king d6, maintaining the opposition. Now white plays e4, king e6. We get back to the same position from the first example, where the king is no longer, the white king is no longer in front of that pawn. So this is a clear draw. e5, and we revert back to the example that we first looked at, king e7, king d5, king d7, taking the opposition and drawing the game. But if we go back to the original position, if we were to change whose move it is, going back to the original position, our second example, if it's white to move, he's actually winning because he takes the opposition with king e5. Now the black king has to give way. This is a very fundamental position that you have to know in king and pawn against king. If white has the opposition with the pawn behind the king, he's winning. Now, either way the black king gives way to the white king, for example, king f7, the enemy king, the white king, moves forward the other way to d6. And that is, if we go back a step, if it was king d7, white would play king f6, like so. So, in this position, now white can play forward with the pawn next move. If black plays king e8, e4. If black plays king d7, e5. And now a very important position. When you get the pawn to the fifth rank like this, and the enemy king goes in front of it with king e8, you have to take the opposition here. It's very important to play this move king e6. This is the final trick. The king escorts the pawn to the eighth rank by force. If you don't play king e6, for example, moving the king back to f6, we play e6 with the pawn, the game is a draw now. Common beginner's mistake, moving the pawn up instead of opposing with the king in front of the pawn. Now black takes the opposition correctly, e7 check, king to e8, and again it's a draw, king e6. So here we see that the early move e6 was a mistake. Going back to that position,
King e6 wins the game. Now the black king again has to give way. One way or the other, king f8, king d7. Now the opposition is no longer important because the king simply controls all the squares that the white pawn needs access to and simply rams the pawn home. So king d7, king f7, e6 check, and the pawn queens by force. Now we'll look at one more example. In our next example, we see the pieces placed along the e-file, the king's on e7, as in the first example, but the white king on e3 now, not slightly as aggressively placed. The main difference in this example is that the white pawn is not in the center, but off to the side on b2. Now, it's very important to understand, basically, when you have king and pawn against king, it's in your advantage, it's to your best advantage to have that pawn as far back as possible. The reason for this is that the pawn, by being far back, can be used for waiting moves to win the opposition. In the following example, a lot depends on whose move it is. So if it's black's move here, what he wants to do is try to get his king in front of the white pawn. That's his job here. Black's main task is to get his king in front of that pawn as far up the board as possible, even giving white as little space as possible. So if black is to move here, one natural move might be king d6. The problem is that white takes the opposition. After king d6, king d4. King c6, king c4. King b6. Now what should white play? Ask yourself this question. What should white play in this position? The black king has achieved what it could here. It's placed itself in front of the enemy pawn, the correct position to be. But he does not have the opposition against the enemy king. And now white to move wins the game by taking the opposition, king b4. It's very interesting to note that it's important that white has an extra move at some point with his pawn. That's even a bigger advantage. Anyway, white is winning with a pawn either on b2 or on b3 in this position. Now it's very much like our second example. King c6, king a5. And now it's king b7, king b5. Again, gaining more ground. King c7, king a6. If king b8, now white has time to play b4. He has a lot of time to wait here. b4, king a8, b5, king b8. Now this is a little bit tricky. Because the pawn is close to the side, black has a better chance of drawing in such endgames. The a pawn is almost always a draw. But with a b pawn, it's not so easy. After king b8, White plays king b6, correctly taking the opposition. And now black plays for a stalemate draw by going into the corner with king a8, the best chance. And now king c7, king a7. And the game goes like this. b6 check, king a8, b7 check, and the white pawn queens. So in this example, black could not get in front of the pawn in the correct way to draw the game. Going back to the original position of our third example, king on e7, the white king on e3, and the white pawn on b2. So we saw that king d6 didn't work because the white king can take the opposition with king d4. But a good question is, in this position, black has a distant opposition, can he try to stay further away and somehow draw the game? It doesn't work. After king d7, king d3, white keeps the opposition on the distant opposition. There's three squares between these kings, so it's still an opposition. If king c7, king c3. Now if king b7, what should white play here? King b3. 
or even better is king d4. But you might say, well, then black takes the opposition. No, it's a trick. Black takes the opposition, but we have a waiting move. And this is so important. B3. And white wins the game because he has the opposition. So go back to our first example and imagine if the pawn was starting on B3 instead of on B2. Let's look at that position. Now we have a much more interesting situation. In this example, our fourth example, the white pawn has been moved up to B3 instead of B2. Black to move. Again, if he moves forward, white takes the opposition. King E6, King E4. So he has to patiently move to the side. King D7. King D3. King C7. King C3. And King B7. And now the game is a draw. Amazingly enough, the game is a draw. After this move, King B7, King B4 doesn't work because King B6 is a draw. Taking one step backward, what else might White try here? If B4, King B6, and we have a position from our first example. So B4 doesn't work, King B4 doesn't work. The only other try for White is King C4. But then black simply draws by playing king c6. So in this final example, we've seen the importance of the pawn for the aggressing side to be as far back as possible. Just the advancement of that pawn from b2 to b3 made this position a draw for black. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for our chesslecture.com presentation on king and pawn versus king.